Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD. And if this is your first time checking me out, make sure to hit that subscribe button to get the latest and greatest on tech videos. So today is all about installing Exchange 2019. Yeah, wow, 2019. This is a super, super basic uh, video. So let's get started. Now, I have two virtual machines within my infrastructure. This is inside a lab. I'm using VMware Workstation, uh, I think version 14. I have an Active Directory and I have an additional virtual machine called VXchange, right? Pretty self-explanatory. VXchange is the one that we're going to install Exchange 2019 into. This is a PowerPoint that I'm presenting to you guys. I will provide the link for this PowerPoint, so don't freak out, okay? So on this screenshot, I'm showing you within my Active Directory that I have added my Exchange server into this uh, Active Directory, into my domain. My, now my Active Directory and the Exchange VM are both server 2019, standard version. And I'm using build 17744 RS5, which is I think Redstone 5 release. Cool, All right? Now this is my exchange box and from here I'm going to mount my, you know, Microsoft Exchange 2019 ISO. So I right click on this tab right here. I'm going to go inside settings. Within settings we're going to go inside the CD DVD. We're going to click on browse and within browse I'm going to locate my exchange server 2019 64-bit uh, ISO. So we're going to select that. We're going to mount it. Click OK. And your virtual machine, if you're doing it within a virtual machine, it should start loading up the ISO, which is a DVD, which is your D drive. Once you click on that, now the option that we need to do is run the setup and click on run setup. And it's going to do all fancy kind of things. And once it's done, you're going to get this. Now, I definitely recommend doing uh, check for updates. But like me, I don't like to do this part because I just want to see how it works. So I picked do not check for updates and I clicked on next. It's gonna start copying the files and it's, this process takes a while, I would say between five to 10 minutes. Once this is completed, you're gonna get the nice introduction. Click on next on that. Definitely need to accept the license agreement to continue. So click on accept the terms, click on next. Now you have two options. You could do recommended settings or do not use recommended settings and then you know, configure it the way you want it. Uh, this is my first time installing server 2019. So I say, well, you know what, let's do the recommended settings to see how it goes. So I left it as the default and I clicked on next. For this video, I'm only going to install the, these two. It's going to be mailbox and management tools. Now the edge transport row, I'm going to do it later on on a different virtual machine. But once you check off mailbox role, it's gonna automatically give you the management tools. Now, another thing that you wanna do is check off automatically install Windows Server roles and features that are required to install Exchange Server. Now, Microsoft tries their hardest to do this for us behind the scenes to make life easy. Now, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. So I said to myself, okay, it's Exchange 2019. Let's try it out to see how well it works. So I left it as the default, then I clicked on next. Now the default path to install the program is going to be here. You are able to change it. So I left it as the default as the C drive. Clicked on next, give your exchange organization a name. I basically said BTNHD. Again, Microsoft is trying to be slick and give us extra help. They are able to provide the proper permissions within your Active Directory. So if you wanna do that, go for it. If not, you could do it manually. Uh, I wanted to see how well that works out. So I checked it off and uh, I clicked on next. Now they do give you an option to do malware protection settings. Uh, you are able to enable it or disable it. Uh, I think I hit yes on this and then I clicked on next. On this dialog box, it's going to check your readiness. Again, I just inserted the ISO. I just wanted to see what would happen and you're gonna get this, all right? Uh, I got a bunch of errors, two errors, and I needed to retrieve or install the Microsoft Unified Communication Manage API 4.0. And I also needed to get the Visual C++ 2013 package. Again, Microsoft is nice enough to provide the link. So click on the link 
And depending on what browser you're using within your server, I have Chrome, so Chrome opened up. And the first link that I clicked was for the API 4.0. So I clicked on download. Uh, the package is around 240 megabytes. Once it downloads, click on it. You're gonna get this. It's going to start extracting the files and copying the files to start the installation. So you're gonna get this nice little window, click on next. You, got, you definitely need to read this, it's up to you. A lot of us don't really read it, but we definitely need to accept the license and terms to continue. So select that, hit install. It's gonna start doing its thing, and eventually when everything works out, you're gonna get this. That's great. So click on finish, and okay, we took care of the managed API 4.0, so we need to take care of the Visual C++ 2013. So click on that link. Again, depending on what browser you're using, for me, it opened up within Chrome, and we need to download the Visual Studios C++ 2013. So click on download. Uh, I picked 64-bit and 86. In the past, I've seen if you download 64-bit because again, we're using Windows Server 2019 64-bit, so it makes sense to install that. Sometimes you still need to have the 32-bit version uh, for it to work correctly. So I said to myself, okay, download both of them and click on next. Because I'm using Chrome, Chrome is gonna say, hey, you're downloading multiple files, do you allow? So I clicked on allow so I could get both uh, exe files downloaded at the same time. So once they're completed, I clicked on the 86 bit first. Uh, definitely accept the license and terms and then hit install. This installation, the 86 and the 64 bit is super fast. Once it's completed, click close. Do the same thing with 64 bit, just click on it, accept the license and terms install really quick, you're done, close. So you're back inside the readiness dialog box. So you can click on retry. It's gonna start checking again. All the errors disappeared except one of them. It looks like we needed to reboot the server. That's okay. So I hit the X to close the installation. I definitely hit yes. So I clicked on start, I clicked on restart, clicked on continue, and my virtual machine started restarting, which is a good thing. Now, once you're back inside your virtual machine, you're logged in, the Microsoft Server 2019 installation will not start automatically, so you have to go inside your D drive, right-click on it, and do the installation again. It's going to start copying the files. Once it does that, you need to do the introduction, so click on Next, accept the license and terms, Next again. We're using the recommended settings, Next. We're doing the mailbox role, and we definitely want the installation to do the roles and features for us. Click on next. We're gonna leave it as the default path, as a C drive. Next again, you have to rename your exchange organization. I know we did this already, but because of the reboot, we have to do all this again. So give it a name. Uh, if you want the installation to apply the correct permissions within your Active Directory, go for it. For me, I wanted to see how well that works out, so I just enable it. Click on next. Uh, I believe I said uh, disable this. And again, it's going to do the check again. And bam, the install button highlighted. The only issues that I had was warnings uh, stating that my uh, that the installation will upgrade my Active Directory. I was cool with that. I clicked on install and it started doing this thing. Now this process took between, I would say 25 to 40 minutes and eventually, once it was done, I came back, I got this. I checked off Launch Exchange Administration Center, clicked on Finish. It started to load up within my default browser, which was Chrome. And right, boom, that's it. I just needed to log in. I put my username, my password, and sign in, and you're done. Done. This is super basic. Uh, I will provide the PowerPoint for you guys. Uh, the link should be at the bottom. If the link is not at the bottom, harass me at the comment section and let me know, hey, Bernardo, where is the PowerPoint? Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I think the next video I should take care of the transport role. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button, leave comments right below, and i catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.